What'd you get a patent on? Airframe construction. Element marketed as helium. All right. Yep. What's that? It's construction where the board's thicker than a regular board, hollow in the middle, has air cavities that dissipate energy. Boards don't lose pop. Do you remember how the hell you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember the helium boards? I don't remember the helium boards. Oh, I, no, I do, okay. actually. So it sounds familiar. So but. they were six ply, and two of the plies had a groove in them. And then, by the way, moisture and expansion and contraction happens. A thin layer of wood would warp okay. in that first half hour once the glue got put and put in the press and then get stuck in a warped situation, which is a pretensioned situation. You're purposely warping it. Per put it in tension. Okay. And then when energy comes, imagine that every time you land a trick, it's like this energy. It's like a spring. But this energy is radiating through the board. Imagine you throw a, rick, a rock in water, yeah. right? And the waves are going to move away from it. And the things that are going to change it might be branches in the water, twigs, wind, things happen right mm -hmm. so when you land a trick and you do that and that energy radiates through your board even when you land trucks you know what you broke the nanotubes a couple nanotubes <laughs> <laughs> every trick landed some nanotubes every trick landed some nanotubes probably got compromised and that's why the boards start getting a little and soft that's why they start to get a little soft oh. but the problem is if you make a board so rigid, yeah. then it's like the energy transfer isn't right. The resonance isn't right. You know, it's like that whole thing. You tap a board on the ground and, and there's something that tells you it's right. It's and good. That's yeah. a point yeah. where it's not right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the tubes. You broke enough tubes. Wait, so what about the helium, though? That's a marketing. There was, it, was a patent worth there, it? There, there yeah. is like a 0.024% helium in the air that we're breathing right now. <laughs> was just it, marketing, yeah. Was, this, was the patent worth it? Because you said no, you never it, again. It, you it would, never, it, right, it, you would. The energy and do it. And then the problem is, is I made this construction. Mm -hmm. I tested it. I developed it had samples out to retailers around the country. And then I went to all my customers and said, I got a new construction here. It's all developed out. And they're like, no, thank you. Not interested. It's not seven ply. It's not what our skaters don't want anything different. It's not what they're used to. Six months later, Element says, hey, uh, you still got the helium thing. If we, if we could do it in a, under our trade name, not airframe, our trade name helium, not, okay. not your trade name airframe. Right. Because they'd be like, don't tell us what to do, you know? And um, and that was across the brands as a whole that I, I worked with, right? Very prestigious brands. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's the don't tell us what to do thing, right? Mm. You know? Mm. And that sort of canned it. And then because Element did it, nobody else wanted to do it because Element did it. Right. You know, and that's the whole thing. And no other company was ever going to manufacture it because it was patent locked. But also, why would we spend two bucks more making a board? Right. And selling it for four bucks more. Now, a bunch of people in the industry, well, you can't sell boards for any more money. And I'm like, you know, whether it was helium or whether it was like um, fiber light or pop drops for pop war. And I'm like, you know, I'd be talking to someone. I'm like, you know, I've only built a quarter million of those in the last three years. Mm -hmm. And they look at me like, oh, no, you can't sell a quarter million boards. For I built a quarter million of them in the last three years. And they wouldn't believe me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> All with carjacks. And did just, that? Just yeah. <laughs> and yeah. No longer carjacks. Yeah. So yeah. that that died out. The helium. Yeah. Stuff. So the patent's still there. Um, and I've done a little bit of stuff in the recent years, and mm. you know, possibly now with New Deal, I'll, I'll do something with it. I think I'm the New Deal project. I'm going to try to use it as a development lab, mm -hmm. um, because in a sense, I mean, I've. A product doesn't mean anything if somebody doesn't market it. Sure. Convincing them how to market it and what to do is a big problem. Yeah. But if anybody says to me, hey, we got an idea for a marketing program, and here's what it is. I go, okay, I'll make you a board match that. Mm, right. And they'll be like, and then they're like, whoa, it works. You know, like go back in the in that heyday of, of Giant in the late 90s, early 2000s, and... Um, Man, the black label boards are tough. I'm like, yeah, they're tougher than element boards. Well, same factory. Well, 
the cross pans are closer together and there's more longitudinal fiber on the outside, but you're more likely to get stress cracks. A black label skater ain't fucking caring about stress cracks. <laughs> but an element kid, a little flippy tech kid, he's worried about stress little cracks, stress right? Cracks, right. Yeah. Now, the black label board was 10,000 thicker. I mean, that is like three human hairs. But that's a lot it's when a it lot. comes to the structure of a board, yeah. especially when you orientate it in the right place. Right. So I've always built product where people like, they buy this product over and over because it works. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily know why. You know, I know why. Yeah, you know? right. It you seems know, I can make anything that I've made in the past. Right. You know, over and over again. It seems to me that the the... The development nowadays is is in the graphics. Everybody's right. doing the the embossed and the raise and the different veneer cuts and Fades, the, yeah. it's, it's slices. Yeah. Uh, it's deal aesthetic. with the, the the hologram. Everybody's doing the graphics. They need something new and right. That's a development. I feel like yeah. And some things like you know, that's actually not a hologram. It's a lenticular image, and that lenticular image was quite a lot of work to develop the manufacturing process to make that work of a board. Right. Make it stick and work and mm -hmm. all of that right so everything becomes a process right mm -hmm. like like the embossed look that was something we did for dill originally truly embossed mm -hmm. nowadays it's graphic emboss people don't just do layers real of emboss yeah. which is layers of so ink. people are yeah. coming to you being like hey i have this idea for this graphic and now you're facilitating how that's well, the put on the board right, the challenge is can you put together a process to get that to work with your vendor pool or with your own internal development. And right? still function. And still function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy right, when said. some people come up to it and they're you're just like, oh God, not again. Like no, see, well, I, we'll try that. We'll I'll figure it out. I like a out. challenge. You do. Well, yeah, of okay. course. Right. So it's like I like a challenge. You know, it's like sometimes people are in my shop and like, do you get bored doing this? I'm like, every board's like a puzzle. Okay. I'm I'm taking this feedback, this interaction, you know, if they're in the parking lot doing some manuals and some ollies like I asked them to, and then they bust out five bangers. And then their heel flip's not working. And I look at it and go, you just need the board to spin a little bit more. And I'll go change the tail length. And they're like, yeah, that's what I want. It's like, they just got to watch it. you know. So you're watching oh, wow. them skate the boards and you're figuring out in your head, oh, I got to change that. It's that's math. But the challenge is whatever you change, I made it better here. You might take away something over there. Yeah. Yeah. So the, it's the hardest balance, right? Like you go like, oh, big wheels are great for cracks and rough surfaces, right? But well, my Ollie hits too late now. Right. Okay, yeah. so I don't like my that part. Now. now now I could I could make the mold and the drilling and, and everything work to mm -hmm. counteract that. Right. If someone gives me the opportunity to have that interaction, right? So with the graphic stuff, you're trying to facilitate what the people want in their graphic board, you know, with the, the veneers or whatever it may be, embossing or, but still keeping it in that price point. Right. right. You're still trying to match that. Right. So it's a challenge. Oh, it's very much of a challenge. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. the reality is like, I'm in a tread water business. I've been treading water for years. I'm in business and I enjoy what I do. Yeah. But, you know, a thousand boards a day has to go through the door to drive water. Well, I heard that in what, in 2005, you sold 10 million boards. Yeah, past total. 10, 10 million, 10 somewhere million around then. 10, wow. 10, 10 million. Built over 15 million now in my career. <laughs> and, and I didn't build it myself, by the way. I built the factory, I built the tools, sure, yeah. the systems. But the they're leaving your facility. The yeah, they're yeah. leaving your facility. Yeah. 15 million yeah. skateboards. Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot.